Hello YouTube and welcome to What the Math. Today we're gonna do some math in Kerbal Space Program, specifically math related to uh, orbital docking. So here's my beautiful beginning of the station. I'm actually I should probably open this up uh, because I'm going to be docking here, and specifically we're going to look at math related to. Um, say we have two spaceships orbiting around the planet and we actually want to dock them together now the difficult part about this actually i'm going to be docking my other spaceship which is right here i believe somewhere let me just connect to it i'll show it to you and there it is this is my small docking station i'm going to unlock this as well and this is a, a little spaceship that actually has um a, it has three engines on both sides it has three engines here and three engines here that i can actually enable disable with um, my uh, one and two buttons, which is basically something that I created just to test this kind of uh, mathematics behind this. And this station is flying around, curving at around 71 to 72 kilometers, whereas my main station is around curving at around 100 kilometers. Now, the thing is, they're actually on almost opposite sides, I think. I think that, or actually, no, it's, so it's sort of like over here, and my um, my docking ship is right here. So if I try to dock right now, if I actually try to create a maneuver, where I, I'm, I, when I inter, where basically I intercept their orbits, what happens is that I will have a, a huge, huge difficulty to find an intercept. It's, it's really, really difficult to try to find an intercept. I actually have to do a few orbits around Kerbin before I can even um, find an intercept where they're close enough to get for me to approach the station. So, unfortunately, waypoints are not enough to try to find the perfect intercept, especially if you take off the Kerbal Space Station at the wrong moment. So what we need to do is we need to find a way to calculate how long do I have to wait or how many orbits do I have to do around Kerbin before these two spaceships are close together for me to do the orbital transfer or Hohmann maneuver which we've discussed in one of the previous videos. So there's two things here, two things we have to think about. Let me just, I'm going to switch to another program to show you what I mean by this. And this is actually GeoGebra, so this is a visual way for me to show you what I mean. So one of my ships is right here. This is the ship that uh, is my docking station and it's orbiting around Kerbin in this manner. You can see there's an angle of uh, orbit right here. And this is my station that I want to dock with. Now this station E is orbiting a little bit slower because it's farther away from Kerbin. Whereas this station B or the spaceship B is orbiting a little bit faster. So first thing to consider is if you're trying to dock with this station with E, if it's actually, um, if it's behind you, if it's actually behind you, this spaceship will take quite a long time to catch up to it. Uh, so because it will be moving faster and this station will be moving slower. So by the time that it catches up with this station, it will actually, you know, you have, you have to do at least 30, maybe even 40 orbits. Um, so what I would do is if this is behind you, change the orbit of this spaceship to one above the station. So essentially you will move this circle or your circular orbit and you'll make this, let's just say this is going to be 1.7. You'll move it right above the station here. And so what will happen then is this, your docking station or sorry, your spaceship will be moving slower, whereas the docking station will be moving faster. So that's the way you'll be able to catch up with it. So in other words, if your spaceship that you're trying to dock to is behind you, try to raise your orbit above it. If you're uh, actually behind it, if you're here and the docking station is here, make sure that you have a smaller orbit so that you catch up to it. So, because the inner circle is a lot, um, your orbit around is faster than the outer circle. So this is kind of like, if you think of a race, in a race, you're trying to run on the inner circle if you're trying to be, um, you know, faster than everyone else, if you're trying to overcome them. And you, um, if you just, you know, if someone is trying to overcome you and you're on the outside lane, you'll move slower uh, compared to them. So this is the, basically the principle behind this. Now, let's talk about the difficulty with this. How do we actually find um, how long it takes for these two space uh, space stations and spaceships to orbit around Kerbin? And this is actually the easy part because the Wikipedia does have a lot of different formulas on this. This is by Kepler and third Kepler's law gives you the orbital period right here. So this is the formula we'll be using um, to find the orbital time of, you know, spaceship around Kerbin. Uh, A here would be the distance from the center of Kerbin to your spaceship. So in other words, if my distance right now, where's my spaceship? Um, if I'm right now 71 kilometers above Kerbin, the A here would be 600 plus 71, which is 671,000 because 
Um, Kerbal radius is 600 kilometers, and this is 71 kilometers. So this is how you find it. And this right here, this is called standard gravitational parameter, and this is actually given to you in the game. So um, it's mass of carbon times gravity, and it's given to you right if you go to the space center, and then you click on carbon, and you look at information, or sorry, right here, GM is right here. It's 3.532 times 10 to the power of 12. So this is the number we'll be using for this formula. Now we don't actually have to use this number because we, uh, what we're looking for specifically, we're looking for um, a period or a time when um, both of these spaceships will be kind of, I'm going to use protractor here, uh, kind of on the same line. So I'll just say this line right here. So I'm trying to find when this spaceship and this spaceship align together like this. Because then I can actually find um, a perfect time for an orbital transfer where they actually will intersect with each other. Um, now to find this orbital um, uh, or basically this alignment of orbits, I need to use a pretty complicated formula. Specifically, we're going to be using a cosine formula for this. And which is why I have my angles here. So let me just, I'm going to remove some of these. I'm going to put this here. So the reason there is an angle in the middle is because I'm going to be using a cosine of this angle uh, to find when these two orbits align. So in other words, when um, the cosine of both of these things is equal, this is when they'll be aligned. Uh, and the thing is, it's not actually enough to find the aligned orbit. I need to actually still calculate the, the time it takes for orbital transfer and then also include this into my calculations. But we'll do this later. Let's just find the, when these two orbits align so that I can actually start calculating this stuff. Um, to do this, I'm going to use my calculator. And specifically here, I'm just going to be plotting cosine of x. So this is essentially, this will give me a wave-like um, wave graph that I'll show you in a second that will look like this. So this is my cosine um, wave of the, um, basically the orbit. So every time the spaceship flies around the orbit, it creates this. And uh, let me just show you a visual representation of what this means. And here's what we're looking at. So this is a spaceship orbit in around Kerbin, and it creates this cosine wave uh, that looks like this. It looks like a wave. So here, let's just start from here. Orbit starts on, at this point, then it finishes at this point. So it's basically one uh, from the crest from to crest. So one of these is this is one orbit. And but now we have to create another one for our other spaceship. So we actually have to find how much faster is it moving compared to the, the first spaceship. So we're going to be looking at the ratio between their um, orbital periods. In other words, we're looking at T1 divided by T2. And here we have the formula for this that I showed you before. And the formula is 2 pi square root of um, the first A cubed divided by mu and then divided by 2 pi square root of second A cubed divided by mu. So this is the formula uh, from the third uh, Kepler's law. And the thing is, we, if we actually look at this, we can cross most of these out. We can cross out this, we can cross out this, we can cross out this. So what you'll get at the end is this. You will get uh, square root of A1 cubed divided by square root of A2 cubed. So my first altitude right here is actually, it says 98, but I think it goes between 98 and 103. So I'm going to go for uh, for the higher value. I'm going to go for 103 kilometers. And my second value for my docking ship, I'm going to look at apoapsis again, is 72. So it's 103 and 72. Which means that 103 plus 600 is uh, 703. So it's going to be square root of... And this is, has to be in meters, by the way. So it's going to be 703,000 meters cubed divided by 72 plus 600 is going to be 672,000 meters cubed. So th these two numbers, this number here and this number here, this is my um, distance away from the center of Kerbin. And I'm using the apoapsis here just to make this a little bit more accurate. So let's use our calculator to find what this ratio is. And the answer is 1.069, or I'll just go for a slightly uh, less accurate value of 1.067. So here, this is the number I found. Now, what does this number mean? Well, it means that um, one of the spaceships is 
uh, taking 1.07 times faster to orbit around Kerbin. Um, so this is what this means. And how do we use this in our uh, formula here in, in this graph that I showed you before? Well, now we will have two graphs like this and one of them will be a little bit faster. So what I'm going to be looking at, I'm going to be looking at a cosine of 1.07x. So my second value right here is going to be cosine of 1.07x. And if I plot this, you'll see that it starts, um, they start joined together, but then they kind of separate. And what I'm trying to find now is when do they join again? So what this will show me is how many orbits it takes for these two spaceships to realign with each other. To do this on the calculator, you can use the trace function or you can just move around using the window format, which is what I'm going to be doing here to make it a little bit more convenient. So I'm going to change this value to 2000 and then 4000. And you can see they're still not aligned, but it's slowly coming closer together. So let's just look for that point where they realign again. And here they come. So somewhere over here, they realign again. And I have to find this value a little bit more precisely. So I'm going to take a look at the table now and see if I can find it. So I'm going to go to table set. I believe this is a value of around 5,000. So I'm going to start at 5,000 and go into the table and take a look at it. And here, the, I'm, what I'm looking for is for these two values to be exactly the same. So let's just scroll around and find when they're equal. And the value is actually 5,143. It's somewhere around here that, where they actually realign. So if you look at the graph, this is approximately 5,143. Now, this is in degrees. So what this means is that when the first, uh, the bigger uh, orbit, when the first orbit orbits around the curve in 5,143 um, 5, degrees, this is when they will realign again. So every every 5,143 degrees, which is actually, to make this a little bit simpler to understand, I have to divide this by 360 degrees. This is the number of degrees in a circle. And essentially every 14.3 orbits. So after every 14.3 orbits of the bigger st station, of the, the station that's farther away, they will realign again. And let's, let's actually test it. So right now they're kind of aligned. The docking station is right here. This is my main spaceship that I want to dock to. And uh, I'm going to count orbits and see how many orbits it takes them to realign in the same position because this one is about to overtake me and we're going to start from here. So let's just start from this is zero, zero orbits and one hippopotamus, two hippopotamus, three hippopotamus, four hippopotamus, five hippopotamus, six hippopotamus, seven hippopotamus, eight hippopotamus, nine hippopotamus, ten hippopotamus, eleven hippopotamus, twelve hippopotamus. 13 14 oh no, oh no, oh no. So this is about 14.3. Uh, and it looks like I miscalculated a little bit. So it's about 14 point something, 14 point maybe 8, 14.8 or 14.9. Um, so it's not exactly precise because I think when I was using my um, orbital periods, I kind of estimated things in terms of the actual um, radius here. And also at the same time, I did use a very, um, very uh, rough um, rounding. So this is actually this value right here. So this value right here is actually not 1.07, but probably um, I think it's a little bit less. That's why there's a slight miscalculation, but it's, it's still relatively accurate. Um, now, the important thing is uh, to realize that it also takes you to it, it takes time to um, to change your orbit. So if I'm uh, changing orbits, if I'm doing the Holmes maneuver, it also takes a little bit of time for me to go from lower orbit to the higher orbit. And this is something we need to take in, into consideration as well. And I think this is something we'll cover in the next part. Just for this part, remember that if you're trying to find the time it takes for both spaceships to align so that you can do the transfer maneuver. What, all you have to do is essentially use, um, use this formula right here, square root of the first radius cubed divided by the square root of the second radius cubed, which will give you the uh, ratio between their time periods. And you can then use this to 
uh, to find how much faster, how much slower the station is moving and when they will realign. You don't have to use close science for this, you can use other methods and I think one in the next video I'll actually show you another method you can use. But for now let's just stop here and in the next video let's try to actually calculate um, when precisely we need to uh, start changing the orbit and uh, try, to or um, try to basically connect to the spaceship right here. Thank you for watching and good luck to you, bye bye.